Welcome to Mumbai. With a population of 22 million people, it's India's largest city and one of the most populous cities in the world. And it doesn't have a lot of land because it's built on a peninsula. That also makes Mumbai one of the most densely populated cities in the world. Unlike other cities with a lot of people and not a lot of land, cities like Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Manhattan, Mumbai is not a skyscraper city. Now, there are tall buildings, but the average height is low. And that's surprising, because the price of land in Mumbai is high. And when the price of land is high, developers have an incentive to economize on land. That's why around the world, the trend we see is the higher the price of land, the higher the heights of buildings. So why aren't there more tall buildings in Mumbai? And what are the consequences? Those are the economic questions and the puzzles we'll be looking at today. To help us answer these questions, I spoke with Ruben Abraham and Shidich Batra from the IDFC Institute, a think tank based in Mumbai that works on issues of urban infrastructure and governance. Mumbai and in fact a lot of Indian cities have some of the most restrictive land use constraints uh, in the world. Um, the, the main tool that in Bombay that is used is the, the floor space index, uh, which basically limits how much you can build on top of the land that you own. And so it restricts the construction to about 1.3 uh, FSI in most of Bombay. Let's pause here for a second to talk FSI. Cities around the world use a floor space index, or ratio, to regulate the maximum amount of floor space that can be built on a given plot of land. For example, a floor space index of one lets builders build one square meter of floor space for every square meter of plot. The builders get to decide whether that means covering the entire plot with, say, a one-story building, half the plot with a two-story building, or one quarter of the plot with a four-story building, and so on. So, the higher the FSI, the more space that can be built on the same plot of land. When we compare Mumbai's FSI of 1.3 to other densely populated cities, the differences are striking. The FSI in Singapore can be as high as 25. New York, Chicago, and Hong Kong allow FSIs up to 12 or 15. In fact, Mumbai and other Indian cities, they have some of the most restrictive FSIs in the world. The higher allowable FSI in cities like New York has enabled more offices and apartments to be built on the same land. Instead of sprawling outwards, Manhattan has grown up. In fact, by letting buildings grow tall, Manhattan has increased its size by almost two additional Manhattans, an amazing way of making more land, essentially, out of thin air. So the government is artificially trying to restrict how much builders can construct on the land that is available by using this tool. It's very regressive and it doesn't make sense, and it actually drives up the cost of housing, of commercial real estate, uh, and the cost of living in Bombay. The average uh, floor space per person is about uh, 48 uh, square feet per person. Uh, and just as a comparison, uh, the US federal government uh, mandates that you have to have a minimum of 50 square feet per person uh, in prison cells. Wow. Uh, and so people are living in more densely uh, uh, populated conditions in Bombay than they are in uh, you know, the prison system in the US. So now that this policy has been in place for the last several decades, and the demand has, is high and has only been increasing, you created basically rent-seeking opportunities for the, the political uh, system, for the bureaucratic system to extract uh, rents, no pun intended, uh, for uh, being able to sell off additional uh, FSI. So we have a lot of people, not a lot of space. Mm -hmm. One thing you do see is a lot of slums. It's hard to ignore them when you're in yeah. Mumbai. Yeah. How is this related to low FSI? You have the island city with 1.3 FSI, 
and you've got the suburbs with one FSI in, a, in probably the densest urban conurbation in the world. So obviously you're going to get some pretty bad outcomes as a consequence, which primarily consists of driving the poor out of any kind of formal housing. So in fact, if you go in there, what you'll basically see is, by and large, especially in the island city, is mostly, I would say, lower middle income people to middle income people who live or in, in, in slums. And that's because they've been priced out of the housing market. Because of the low FSI. That's right. The government has now clearly made housing one of their key priorities. But that housing is nowhere near the place of employment. So it actually makes it extraordinarily cumbersome for people to commute to work, whereas the slums are actually where work is, as a consequence of which people would rather live in slums rather than move into formal housing that the government has actually provided for you. Right, so the government sometimes builds housing, yes. which is so far away yes. from work that yes. people would prefer to live in the slums. Yes, I mean, one way to solve for that problem was to have much more sort of effective public transport. Yeah, and in many parts of the world, in order to take advantage of uh, public transportation, mm -hmm. you build tall near a metro station. That's right. Right? That's right? But that's not happening so much. Well, the conversation is beginning to happen. So transit-oriented development is actually part of the conversation. So if you look at the Mumbai development plan that was tabled last year, you will see that the FSI along transit corridors is very high. It's, if I remember right, it's closer to eight near the transit corridor. So that conversation is beginning, but part of the problem is a lot of planners can't seem to tell the difference between density of physical space and people is something that people don't necessarily understand. Let's assume for a second that we double the FSI of Bombay some from 1.3 to 2.6. Now, the fears that people have that, you know, that's going to lead to overwhelming density actually requires the population of Bombay to also double. Now, that is not going to happen. So what you're really going to see is you're going to make more space available per capita. People need to get over this conflation problem between density of people, density of space, because right now when you say you can give high FSI near, near transit corridors, what's going on through people's mind is, oh my goodness, things are so crowded here already, things are going to get you know, 10 times worse if I give increased FSI. They need to understand the fact that what you're really providing is additional space, right. not additional people. Right, so building up, you're actually in a way creating more land the That's way right. That's Mumbai. right. Yeah, you're, you know, you're effectively reclaiming from the sky. You're on your way to mastering economics. Make sure this video sticks by taking a few practice questions. Or, if you're ready for more development economics, click on the next video. Still here? Check out Marginal Revolution University's other popular videos.